Hello and welcome to episode 7 of the Aronets podcast. My name is Katie. I'm coming to you from Long Island, New York, where I live with my husband, our dog Lola, our crested gecko Scully, and our betta fish Crowley. This is a podcast about knitting and just general yarny goodness with some other crafts sprinkled in from time to time as they come up in my life. If you are a returning viewer and subscriber, thank you so much for joining me again today. And if you're new to the podcast and this is your first time watching, thanks so much for joining us. Welcome. And I hope that if you enjoy chatting with me today, you will consider subscribing to my channel so you don't miss any of the new podcasts. You can find me on Instagram as at Arrowknits, and you can find me on Ravelry as Knit Music. There is also an Arrowknits podcast group on Ravelry. There I post all of the show notes for each episode. There's also a hello thread. Come say hello to me. I'd love to say hello back. Come introduce yourself. There's a questions thread as well where you can ask me any questions and I will do my best to answer either over on that thread or right here on the podcast. So I have a couple announcements to make. Uh, the first announcement I'd like to talk about is the giveaway that I mentioned in my last episode. So last episode I mentioned that I would be doing a 100 subscriber giveaway to celebrate. Woohoo! And I would like to announce the winner. So we had 19 entries over in the Aronitz Ravelry group and it was to win this awesome Knitter's Pride Dreams DPN sock set. It's got six different sizes of needles in there. Um, so without further ado, the winner of our 100 subscriber giveaway is Grammy Knitterbug, who is Karen from Louisiana. So Grammy Knitterbug, get in touch with me via Ravelry. Send me a personal message with your uh, full name and your shipping address and I will get your DPNs out to you as soon as I can. So congratulations to Karen. The second announcement I'd like to make is sort of a little teaser. Um, I'm going to be co-hosting a drop spindle spin along. I'm so excited. Um, it's going to be co-hosted with Joy of the Anxious Knitter podcast and Taylor of the Wool Needles Hands podcast. So we do have a promo video coming out later on in the week with all of the juicy details. So I won't get into too much detail right now. Look out for that video very, very soon. But I did want to mention because I'm really excited about it. I know that Taylor and Joy are also really excited. Um, so if you've been thinking about trying out spinning with a drop spindle, maybe you have one at home that you've never tried or you haven't tried in a long time, we're going to be hosting a spin along for the beginning of summer uh, where you can feel free to just spin along with us no matter what level you are. So it's going to be, it should be a lot of fun. So again, look out for that promo video. It'll have all of the details. Those are all of the announcements that I have for this episode. Let's get into some knitting, shall we? I have a finished object for you. And guess what? It's not socks. Yay! <laughs> I'm super thrilled to show you a finished object that's not socks. I gotta make sure I'm showing you the right side. It'd be really less than awesome if I showed you the wrong side of my finished. First light shawl. This is a really long shawl. So I'm gonna just go all the way back. Actually, I'm gonna cover my face so that you can see most of it. So I'm really happy with the way, <laughs> I'm really happy with the way that this came out. Here, I'll do this so you can kind of see it in a scrolling fashion. I am so pleased with this shawl. I'm going to take some finished object photos and hopefully I'll be able to insert them in uh, my next podcast episode so you can get some better views of it. But I just pulled this off the blocking board this morning. It's probably, it's it's dry, but I feel like it could have stayed on there maybe a little bit longer, but I I had to show it on the podcast, so there was just no way this was gonna keep, <laughs> keep blocking this morning. <laughs> um, I have to say, so this is the First Light Shawl designed by Vera Bellamaki. I knit this in Madeline Tosh, Tosh Merino Light in the Onyx and Optic colorways. Here, I'll hold it like this. <laughs> and um, this was a pleasure to knit. This was most definitely a 
process knit for me until I completed this lace section here which is sort of the middle of the shawl and then after that it was definitely a product knit because I got really excited and I just wanted to have this shawl I just wanted to be able to wear it so this is both and I I'm a believer that you can be both a product knitter and a process knitter both on just depending on the project depending on your mood um, because I definitely have tendencies towards both it really depends on what I'm knitting so this this project was actually both for me um, I knit this on a size US 6 needle so a four, uh, four millimeter needle the pattern recommended a US 7 I went down a needle size I'm very glad that I did um, because my blocked my blocked gauge was pretty much dead on um, and I also want to mention this is a very shallow yet long shawl so the block dimensions it's 18 inches deep so I'll show you like this you can see that it's not very deep and then it the wingspan is supposed to be 88 inches long I'm gonna be honest I didn't measure the wingspan of my shawl um, I probably could have even stretched this a little bit more but I basically blocked it until my edges were um, looking good and then I stopped because I didn't want to overdo it just to get to the 88 inches um, it's probably close it's really really long um, it's supposed to be asymmetrical the design is asymmetrical more so than the actual shawl but it is definitely um, deeper on this side of the shawl than it is on this side so it's it is a little bit asymmetrical um, in shape as well and I want to say that I was unsure about single ply yarn so this is my first project using single ply yarn ever I think that years ago I might have knit some cowls that were in um, the Malabrigo Silky. Um, it was the 5050 Silk Merino. That was a DK weight, I think. And I think that's single ply. I'm not sure. But um, this is my first foray into sort of modern fingering weight single ply that everybody loves. And I like it so much more now that I have this finished block shawl than I did while I was knitting it. It's not that I didn't love it. It's just, I don't, I don't know. It just wasn't doing anything, anything special for me. Um, I like it, but now that it's blocked, I can definitely see the beauty of single ply. It has a certain drape to it that I think is a little bit different than plied yarns. So I can definitely see that appeal. It also, to me, has a sheen to it that plied yarns don't have. Um, so. Those are the things I like about it. Um, what I don't like about it is it's a little bit fuzzy and this could just be my particular yarn. So it's not gonna stop me from trying another project in single ply yarn. I don't have any more single ply in my stash. Um, someday if I go out and buy some yarn, which I mean, come on, that's never gonna happen. <laughs> Maybe um, I will pick up some single ply yarn uh, from another brand, another company, and give it another go. Um, I always look at Primrose Yarn Co.'s um, Adelaide Single Space. Her single space looks really, really beautiful. I'd like to give that a try someday. Uh, so, overall, I'm happy about this. And I did an Icelandic bind off, which I've never done before. So I looked on the pattern I looked on the project pages rather for the first light shawl and I wanted to see what people were doing for their bind offs because when you hit the end of this shawl you've got over 400 stitches on the needles. So I did not want to use a regular bind off because I knew that it wouldn't be stretchy enough. I also did not want to use a sewn bind off because that tail would be enormous and I didn't want to undertake that at all. So I went and looked. I saw that some people used Jenny's surprisingly stretchy bind off, which I expected. Um, I've used it on socks before. I think I've mentioned in the past. It's okay. I don't love the way that it looks. And I think that for the top of a cuff of socks, it's fine. But I didn't want to finish my beautiful shawl that I put a lot of work into with um, the Jenny's surprisingly stretchy bind off. 
but then I saw that people were using the Icelandic bind off. So I looked up a tutorial and I used a very pink knits tutorial for Icelandic. I will make sure I put that in the show notes for you. Uh, her video is really, really clear as are um, pretty much all of her t tutorials are, are great and really thorough. Um, I'm going to try to show you the Icelandic bind off. It's black. So I don't actually know how successful you'll be in seeing the edge of this knitting, but I'll do my best. Maybe this way? No, it's not good. You can kind of see it. It's definitely or, excuse me, worth looking up because it gives sort of a, a little bit of a rolled edge, reminiscent of an I-cord edge. It's not identical to I-cord. It's not as, to me, it's not as nice as an I-cord edge. I'll put it that way, but it is really nice and it looks awesome for garter stitch. So this is a garter stitch shawl. Even the lace panels are garter. And I thought that this would look really, really nice, and it does. And the cool thing about the Icelandic bind off is that it does not take you a million years to complete. It's only a little bit more work than a traditional bind off in knit stitch. So um, for me, I was able to, once I did it a few times, I was able to really get the hang of it and zoom through and it actually didn't take me long at all to bind off the shawl. I thought I would be binding this off forever. Um, but I, I didn't. So, of course now I want to knit every shawl. I just want to knit. I, I just, I'm having a shawl phase right now. So I finished knitting this one and I'm going to show you a little later on my plans for my next shawl. But then I've also been thinking about these other shawls as well. Um, so look out, I might be like going through a shawl phase pretty soon, um, which is good in a way, but what I also need to do is start thinking about casting on my sweater for Rhinebeck, because I know that that's on my must-do list, and I want to do it, but I just keep thinking about casting on all these shawls. So, uh, more on that a little bit later. So this is my only FO. I do have a half object to show you, and I think you'll be pretty relieved that I finally finished half of a sock, half of a pair of socks. <laughs> this is the V socks that I've shown a couple times. Let me show you up close because this pattern is outrageously beautiful. It just, I love this sock. It's very squishy, which I think I've mentioned before because of the way that you work the V-stitch pattern, it sort of creates another layer over the top. It's, it's hard to explain without seeing it in person, but it, it ends up being a very thick, very squishy sock. But in a sense, it's sort of also a ribbing pattern, so it's also pretty stretchy. Um, I mentioned last time, so I'm using US 1.5 needles, 2.5 millimeter needles on this. I do magic loop. And this is the V-sock pattern exactly, except for the heel. It called for a German short row heel, which I mentioned last time. Oh, I gotta sew that little, that little gap in right there. Um, I mentioned last time that I am not a fan of German short row heels for a couple reasons. The most important one is that they just don't fit my foot very well. So that's the main reason why I don't do them. Um, I also have never been able to do one where I don't have those little holes on the side or at least on one side more than the other. I know that there are um, different te techniques out there that you can use to minimize those. I've tried a couple of them. I still always get holes and I did knit the German short row heel on this which I mentioned last time because I have this thing where I feel bad if I don't try something the way a pattern is written. Like unless I know that what's written there is absolutely crazy and would never work but I don't know, I just have this thing. I, I want to make the things the way that they're supposed to be, for lack of a better way to put it, and I don't know. So I knit the German short row heel. What I will say about the GSR heel is it's the fastest for me to knit. I can knit a German short row heel faster than any other heel. So if it fits your foot, <laughs> so if it fits your foot, go for it. It's a, it's a super easy heel. 
It is also a great heel to just keep going and knitting if you're using the same color if you're especially if you're not changing colors to do another heel that heel is just so fast so I haven't even cast on the second V sock yet um, I need to cast on the second one by the way this is the uh, V socks by Brandy Velton and this is in her hand dyed yarn. This is Long Dog Yarns in the mermaid hair colorway. Uh, this is a sock set that came with the contrasting mini for heels, toes, and cuffs. And I don't have the yarn cake to show you. It's behind the camera in my uh, works in progress basket. But I will say that one sock uses quite a bit of yarn. And I'm in no danger. I have a size 8, uh, women's 8 foot um, so I'm not in any danger of running out of yarn when I knit my second sock, but I have to say in a good way I'm happy that it's it uses quite a bit of yarn because even with a size 8 foot and I like to this is a shorter cuff for me I usually um, make the leg of my sock even longer like up to here at least uh, This I just followed a pattern because I thought that it would look nice to have a little bit of a shorter cuff but even even with that um, It's using it's using quite a bit of yarn, so if you're looking for something that maybe eats a little bit more yarn to get more out of your uh, single skeins of sock yarns, that might be the pattern for you. Also, it's super addictive and a lot of fun, and I would imagine looks great in all kinds of different speckled and even um, lightly variegated colorways. So I gotta cast on that second sock, and I need to make sure that I make that sort of a priority because um, I mentioned last time that I'm getting a little bit burnt out on socks and I still feel that way. I just feel like it's hindering me um, from starting other projects, getting into other projects because I have trouble knitting multiple projects at once. Even if one of them is socks, which I'm getting better at, but I just, I just have trouble um, I want to finish a project when I start it. So especially those V socks with this with being that they're a pattern sock I really want to make sure that I finish them and those were technically my April socks So I'm not gonna be able to we're in May now. I'm not gonna be able to enter them into anything um, And that's okay um, They're still gonna be perfect for my yarngasm box of socks which is year long and it doesn't matter. I set a monthly goal for myself because you need to have 12 pairs at the end of the year. So that's a pair a month if you budget it that way. So I was, I'm doing that for myself, um, but I actually have an extra pair in my box already because in January into February, I need an extra pair of plain socks. So I'm actually in okay standing and I'm sure that maybe in the dead of summer, I will knit more socks than than anything else just because they're small and portable and I won't be covering my lap with wool. So the only other um, work in progress that I have is my little plain sack and this is going to be underwhelming because I haven't really worked on it so I just want to show you real quick because I love the yarn. So I put a little bit more onto the foot of this. It's not on the blocker today guys, I'm sorry. This is just a plain vanilla sock, my own, my own recipe, um, with Valkyrie fibers. And this is her self-striping matte sock base. And this is the Supernatural Club colorway called Pudding. And with a contrasting uh, mini for heels, toes, and cuffs. So I'm just knitting these um, plain vanilla. I'm using my nine inch cirques for these. So it's still a US 1.5, 2.5 millimeter, but these are uh, little high, high sharps. So I can just zoom around and around on these. It's my preference to use nine inch circulars for plain socks. This has that same afterthought heel that I put into the V socks. And this specifically is the heel from the Fangirl socks by Ren and Ollie, which I knit not too long ago. And I love the fit of the heel. So I just popped that heel into both of these socks. I thought, why not? Um, because I wanted to do an afterthought heel, especially for the self-striping, and I really like in self-striping socks when um, you split one of the colors. So I split the gray in half, 
don't know if I'm doing a very good job of showing this to you. So it sort of makes a Y. So I split the gray in half and that's where I put the heel in. So I'm a big fan of, of doing that in self-striping. I think it looks really cool. What I'm planning for these is at this point, I'm gonna try to just keep them as my backup plain vanilla socks because I want to finish them and get them in my box of socks, but I also think that it is good to have a plain sock on the needles and being that I haven't even started my second V sock yet, I think I'm gonna be good with just putting this on the back burner, knitting it whenever, keeping it as my super mindless travel knitting, taking it to work with me, things like that. Um, in case I have a break because I want to knit other things. Also, I think that I just zippered my yarn into this project bag. No, no, we're good. <laughs> Yay. That would have been a disaster. So that's it for whips. Actually, no, that's not it for whips. That's it for knitting works in progress but I really want to show you my spinning progress because I did promise last time that no matter what my job spindling looked like, I would show you. So last time I showed you my fiber and my brand new drop spindle and told you I was gonna learn how to do it. My friend Stephanie showed me how and uh, I promised I would show you no matter what. So let's, let's take a gander. Prepare yourself for some total newbie spinning. This is what I have so far. Yep, that's my hand spun. So this is a Louette Top Whirl spindle. It's the octagon one. So I'll show you, you can see the sides. Now I've never tried any other type of spindle before, so I can't say this with complete confidence but I like that it's the octagon top because then I can sort of um, park my fiber um, when I go to, uh, to twist it and it doesn't just keep moving around the spindle on me. So I'm sure that with experience, it wouldn't matter. <laughs> and this fiber is Shetland Morit. I got two ounces of this. I bought both of these. I feel like I'm holding a giant lollipop or something. <laughs> I got both of these from The Spinnery, which is a shop on Etsy, and I have to say it was super affordable. Um, you buy the spindle and it comes with two ounces of fiber, which is plenty. I'm about three quarters. I weighed this the other day. I'm about three quarters of the way through. Um, I did not have the foresight to stop halfway, get that off the spindle so that I could have two cakes to work from when I'm plying, you know. Didn't, didn't think about it. But since I only have two ounces total, I'm gonna just keep going and put the, as I untwist everything. <laughs> I'm gonna just keep going and put the whole two ounces on this, on this spindle. I think it should be fine. So as you can see, it's uneven. It's very, you know, thick and thin. And I assure you that underneath this layer of thick and thin is my beginning layer, which is horrendous. <laughs> it's like really thick and really, really little thin. So uh, I am improving, which is, you know, that's what we want. We always want to improve. So I am getting better at it. My drafting is getting more even and I'm really enjoying this. I find it sort of relaxing. Uh, the only thing that I can say as far as it being relaxing is that right now I'm not at the point in my spinning career where I can stand up and spin and draft at the same time and let it run to the floor. I'm just, I am not there. So um, I've been, you know, drafting and spinning and then parking the spindle, letting the twist uh, run up what I've um, already drafted. But I will say that doing this to hold on to the yarn, I'm doing it with doing this with my left hand. I eventually am getting a cramp in my hand here, like right in the palm of my hand, right in this area here, which is unusual for me um, because I think that I've mentioned before that I am a musician, I'm a string player, um, mostly a violin and viola. So my 
hey, I have, I have excellent dexterity. I guess is what I'm trying to say. I have really strong palms, especially my left palm. So I guess the act of doing this, keeping this in the same position all the time, which is not something I'm used to, is giving me a cramp. Maybe I need to adjust the way that my thumb is a little bit. I don't know, but I get very into those kinds of things, I guess just because of, of my background. So, so yeah, it's hurting my, uh, my, my drumstick. I like to call it <laughs> chicken drumstick. So if anybody has any suggestions about that, that would be awesome. Um, it could just also be that I need to build muscle memory and that that's just the way it is. It's just a muscle cramp and I need to just work through it. I've been massaging um, after once it does start to bother me. Um, maybe I should take more frequent breaks. I don't know. I get a little addicted once I start spinning, which is why I have three quarters of this done. So as I mentioned in the beginning of the episode, we've got a spin along coming up. So for the time being, I am going to put my spinning to sleep and um, start it back up again when the spin along starts very, very soon. That was my last whip. I almost forgot that I had spinning to show you because I promised that I would show. Uh, let's talk about some acquisitions. So I've got a couple different things to show you. The first thing I want to talk about is a mini swap that I did as my first ever mini swap. I've never, I've never swapped minis before. So I did a mini swap with the lovely Molly from Molly Klein Design and I have it here on the floor. Let me show you. So I, <laughs> being that I had never done a mini swap before, I didn't even know how to do it. So I took all my fingering weight leftovers and I made little mini skeins and we did an awesome swap. I'm so glad that I did. Um, let me show you Molly's business card because I also purchased from her a skein, um, a skein, a skein of soap, a bar of iced coffee soap. So Molly is good at so many crafty things. I think that Molly is best known for her project bags, especially her Disney project bags. This is her business card. I think that she's most known for those project bags, but she's also an awesome soap maker. And most recently, I mean, really recently, like within the past week, she started selling her own hand dyed yarns in her Etsy shop and they are beautiful. Um, so definitely check out Molly's shop, but I bought iced coffee soap from her. It has some scrubbies in it, some little coffee scrubbies. And I, I want to tell you, I was totally planning on showing it on the podcast and all that good stuff, but I got it in the mail right after I finished filming the last podcast and I held out for a couple days and then I just, I had to try it. I had to use it. So it's in my shower right now. <laughs> I've been using it every day since then. So I'm not gonna show you my used soap, but take my word for it, it is beautiful. It is scented, it makes my bathroom smell like a cafe. And I like the little scrubbies, it's like lightly exfoliating. And also I will never turn down anything coffee scented. Um, so we decided to do the mini swap since I had ordered the soap anyway, she sent along our swap. She also added some um, teas, a little lotion sample. There was a piece of chocolate, but that disappeared immediately. So no chance in you seeing that. So I wanna show you all these little minis and we know how great I am at holding a bunch of different things in my hands at once. So let's see how this goes. I still don't have all of them in my hand. That's everybody, that's everybody. Look at this deliciousness. So, this one is one of my favorites. It's so cool. It's all jewel tones. Jewel tones used to be my thing. Um, all of my one skein shawls that I've knit are pretty much all in jewel tones. I used to be really into them and now I'm not into them as much. I'm either into brights or um, super grayish neutrals and like dusty purples, but Jewel Tones used to be my jam, so I think this is absolutely beautiful. My other favorite one is totally unlike me, but I just think it's so cool. 
Look at that. It's so sparkly. So Molly sent me a good, um, a good couple skeins, mini skeins that have Stellina in them, which is great because I don't have any skeins with Stellina. I have one skein with Stellina in my stash uh, to become socks, but that's it. Oh, look at that. That is like autumn in a mini skein. It's fiery. So I'm really excited because I feel like between these new mini skeins from Molly and my fingering weight remnants in my stash, I feel like I finally have enough of a collection to start a scrap yarn blanket, which I've always wanted to do. I really want to make a coziest memories blanket. I'm sure most of you have seen them either all over Ravelry or all over Instagram. They are the little mitered squares that you knit from your, well you can do it in any weight, most people use their sock scraps. And um, you connect them to each other, so I've always wanted to start one, but I didn't feel like I had enough yarn to sort of get it going in any meaningful way. I know that you only add one square at a time, but I didn't want to sort of lose steam on it. And now I can start one, so yay! So thank you so much, Molly. These are beautiful. They, I love them. I'm really excited to put them into a blankie. The other acquisition, the other yarn acquisition I want to show you is a super splurge. Just like a super splurge. Um, it's not something I was planning on getting, but I'm really glad that I did. And I can't wait to show you. So I'm about to show you a set of five large skeins of yarn. So I'm going to show you them one at a time because again, I'm going to be really awkward when I try to hold them all so you can see them, which I will do at the end. So I'm going to start from lightest to darkest. This is the Bohemian set from Casual Fashion Queen. It's on her 80-20 base. It is bouncy and springy and luscious and I love them. So here's the lightest one. You can see it's a lot of undyed with this beautiful lavender, that really muted lavender, and then these splashes of hot pink and icy blue in there. I love this one. That is so pretty. I love that little splatter right there. So that's the lightest one. Then we go into this skein, which is my top two favorites. I'll show you my favorite right after this. This is my second favorite. This is the most sort of springy one. So now we're getting a little bit darker with the darker blues and pinks and there's even some peachy in there. Go this way. This is my favorite. I don't know if you can hear my dog sneezing, but <laughs> uh, this is my favorite skein. This is, I believe, this is Bohemian. So I think that she has been dyeing this color and it's been her hot color and she decided to do a set based around this one. And I definitely understand why it is my favorite. It is the most beautiful muted pinks and mauves and uh, a little bit of blues in there as well. Love this. I'll hold these like this. This is the brightest of the bunch. She's the smartest. Um, mostly magentas going on here. Purples, light pinks, that splatter of red. I love that this sort of red pinky splatter is on most of the skeins. This one's really cool. And then our darkest one is this. So this is purple more to the blue side, but with some lighter blues in there and then um, some more pinky purples kind of speckled in. So together, you get this effect. Oh, look at me holding all of them at once. Um, on the side here where the blue, bluish purple skein is, it's looking super dark in my lighting, which is not the best today. Um, because of our lovely weather that was supposed to be sunny and it's not as sunny as I would have liked, but uh, just know that this skein all the way over here on this hand that's bluish is not as dark in person 
uh, nor is this white skein as bright in person. Uh, so I am loving these. So again, these are from Casual Fashion Queen. I was also, I'm very excited to try a new to me dyer. So I have never uh, purchased yarn from her before. I follow her on Instagram. I always love the pictures that she posts. And I thought, wouldn't it be cool to have a set from a dyer that's just brand new to me? Because we all do it. We have our, our favorite dyers that we keep going back to over and over again, which is, of course, awesome. But I thought it would be cool to try, try someone new for me. So this is going to be, if you watched my last episode, you're probably guessing what this is going to be. This is going to be a saturate shawl. So last episode, I mentioned that I'm dying to knit a saturate shawl by Orange Knits, who is uh, Mara Catherine Briner. It's a half circle shawl with copious amounts of fringe and it uses a really unique color melting technique. Now, last time I talked to you about this, the pattern hadn't been released yet. I'm gonna go put these down. The pattern hadn't been released yet. The pattern is out now and I purchased a copy and I've been looking through it and I just wanna show you Bohemian some more. I've been looking through it and her color melting technique is unlike anything I've seen. It is so interesting. And it's not just the normal sort of striping with the new color and the old color thing um, that you may have seen before, which is obviously also highly effective, but this is something totally different. And I had been curious when I looked at the shawl, the test knit, how she did that because you really can't see where one color starts and another one begins. It's really difficult to tell. You can kind of see where it starts uh, switching over, but I don't know. I just assumed that she used magic. Um, but it's not magic. It's just awesome designing. So if, if that sounds appealing to you, definitely check out the Saturate Shawl. Um, it uses a good amount of yardage and I'm guessing that a lot of that or some of that is due to the fringe. The fringe goes all the way around the outside of that shawl. So I'm, I'm guessing that that's going to eat up some yarn. But I think that I should still have um, leftovers. And I was thinking if I have enough leftover, I could make a really cool like color melt pair of socks that match my shawl. <laughs> is that weird? <laughs> have a matching shawl and socks. Why not, right? They're colors I like. Um, and I actually think that I saw her post on Instagram. She's Orange Knits on Instagram that she's working on a, a color melt uh, version of her socks. She's the designer of the uh, Rose City Rollers that everybody loves, which I've never knit before. So maybe if she does that, that would be the perfect time for me to not only try that pattern, but use that color melt technique and that yarn. So, yay. So that's a shawl that I am dying to cast on. I want to cast it on so badly, but I was dedicated to my first light shawl because like I said, it started out as a process knit. I really wanted to knit it. I loved knitting it. I love the colors. I know that it's black and white, but um, I did find some surprise colored speckles as I was knitting along. I found some purple in there. There's some orange. There's a red speckle here and there. So. The optic colorway is mostly uh, that cream and gray with black, but it's also got some little surprises here and there, which I enjoy. But anyway, I knit that shawl. That's gonna go with everything. Um, it's, we've still had some cool days here in New York on Long Island, so I think that I'll be able to wear it a couple times, hopefully, before uh, the weather gets too warm to wear it. Um, but the Saturate shawl, I've just been craving color and it might be because I was knitting a black and white project. Last time I showed you a bunch of my Hedgehog Fibers Club colorways that I was trying to put together to make a saturate shawl and I just couldn't find an, an order of yarns that, was, that I was happy with. And I started obsessing over it and just really dwelling on it. And I wanted to, I knew that I wanted to knit this shawl and I just said, you know what? I just need something totally different. Those skeins of Hedgehog I love for two separate shawls. I think that they've got color combos that would lend themselves nicely to um, brioche if I want to try it, which I'll talk about in a minute, um, 
or any really any two color shawl I've got a nice blue palette working and then I've got a nice pink peach palette working so I think that that's what those skeins really want to be versus trying to make myself make them work in a shawl that I know I'm not really gonna be super happy with and that's a lot of yardage and it's a large shawl so it, it's gonna probably end up being a decent time commitment and you know hand dyed skeins of yarn are um, when you have a bunch of them like that the the cost of that adds up so I, I don't want to I don't want to use them and not be completely in love and thrilled over the moon with the project that I knit them with so I hope I hope that makes sense I'm, I'm sure a lot of you out there um, will sympathize with that with that sentiment with our precious yarns so oh I have an acquisition that's not yarn but that I'm <laughs> It's my new little toy. It's a knitting gadget, which I never, I never really get. I'm not big into gadgets and notions and those sort of things. Um, Cause I always feel like I should, if I have that money that could be spent on yarn. If I've got the extra money for gadgets, I feel like I could have used it on something else. However, this was important to me and I'm going to show you, it's going to reflect a little bit, so I'm going to try my best to make sure that it doesn't. But I apologize. I'm going to try not to blind anybody. It's just shiny. Oh, there we go. That's not too bad. So this is a mini scale. It is from Lolo Did It. So Lolo Did It is an indie yarn dyer, and I follow her on Instagram. I know, big surprise. <laughs> And she posted, oh, I have these back in stock. And I had this light bulb moment. I was like, I need that. I need that. I have been using a food scale to weigh my leftovers, uh, which works. It's just not that accurate because my food scale only measures to the gram. So it doesn't measure anything in between. I know some scales even measure to the half gram, which would be better. Um, but this measures, I believe, to the 0.01 gram. And it goes up to 200 grams, which is perfect for, you know, knitters. We don't usually have anything heavier than that that we're trying to weigh at one time. Um, and it lights up. Let me try to show you. So the display lights up, which is super helpful. It does have on off, but it also automatically turns off in 30 seconds. So no big deal if you leave it on. At first I thought that having a cover on it was a little bit silly, but if you're the type of person that travels with this, like if you want to throw this in your knitting bag, and it's it's small, here's a skein of yarn, so it's a little bigger than a third of a skein of yarn, it's, it's not quite half. Um, it's little, it's cute, and if you want to throw this in your knitting bag, you could because the cover is going to stop the buttons from being depressed and it's going to stop the actual scale portion, which is this uh, square over here, from being pushed down as well and eating up the battery. So this has been my new little toy. I've been weighing all of my leftovers. And if you've never done that before or never thought about doing that, it's a good idea. This was super cost effective. This was cheaper than my food scale. I bought my food scale at Bed Bath & Beyond um, and I do use it in the kitchen mostly for measuring spinach in ounces. Go figure, that's what I mostly use my food scale for. I am weighing yarn. <laughs> and now I don't have to. I can keep this in my little crafty room and I can don't have to worry that I'm not going to have it in the kitchen when I need it, my food scale. Uh, so if you've never done this before or never thought about doing it, it's a good idea. It's the easiest way to figure out how much yardage you have left over. Um, so actually, case in point, the first light shawl, I didn't knit a swatch and uh, block it because I thought that I was not going to have any yarn left over. Because when I looked at all the projects on Ravelry, I saw that people had used up their skeins. They're, they're two skeins and I was like, well, I don't want to waste it. Because um, I know that you can, of course you can take apart a swatch and knit it again, but for me, once I soak it and block it, I don't really want to knit that yarn again. Um, I just, I don't enjoy it. I don't think it looks as nice as the yarn that you didn't soak and block and make all loopy. So um, anyhow, 
had those people, or most of them, weighed their yarn, or at least the ones I looked at, I would have known that they didn't actually use their two, two skeins. They used partial skeins. Um, uh, by the way, I did end up using most of my two skeins, but I did have a good little bit left over. It would have been plenty to knit a swatch with. I did not weigh my leftovers, but I will, I'll let you know on the next episode when I show my finished pictures of the shawl, um, the exact leftovers that I had. I forgot to show you the little um, cakes left over. So you can weigh your leftovers and, you know, you check out the yardage in your skein. So if you have 463 yards and it's a 100 gram skein, you just divide that and see how many yards per gram you have. And then you use your handy dandy scale to figure out how many um, yards you have left in your uh, skein of yarn and then you know if you can use that yarn for future projects if you have enough um, Because when you weigh something only to the gram there can be a lot of play in there. You could have a Few more yards than you think or you could have quite a few less than you think so if you go ahead and start that project and It ends up that you're on the light side of 10 grams of yarn that you needed You're out of yarn so anywho that's my speech about weighing, weighing your leftovers. It's a good idea and it's the easiest way to do it. And with a scale like that, that goes down to the 0 0.01 gram, you're gonna be pretty darn accurate with how much yarn you've got left over. So check that out. Again, I got that um, from Lolo Did It and it was super cost effective. Let's talk about patterns on my radar. So last week I talked about the Saturate Shawl, which I'm gonna knit. Notice I didn't wind these skeins because if I wind it, I will knit it. It's like, if you book them, they will come. <laughs> so I'm planning on having a little winding party, winding those skeins up so I can do a little swatch and uh, start knitting my Saturate Shawl, but I couldn't let myself wind it because I know that that is just too tempting for me. <sighs> But I've been shawl crazed. I just want to knit all of the shawls. I want to knit all of the like sort of larger colorful shawls. I want to learn brioche. I want all of these things. So I've been looking at a couple sort of brioche, brioche patterns. Uh, one of them is a mystery knit along that's happening right now and the first clue has been released and pretty soon in a couple days the second clue is going to be released. It is the Suzanne Summers Mystery Knit Along, the Sosu MCAL. So if for some reason you don't want to hear what clue one looks like, I'm about to describe it a little bit and tell you how much I love it, then pause me here and jump forward a little bit. Um, but the Photos are all over Instagram. People are posting their progress. Um, it's on Ravelry as well, on uh, people's different pattern pages, um, project pages rather, you can you can see it. So it is a mystery shawl. Now I have not done a mystery knit along since the first West Knits mystery knit along. The first one, people. It's the first and only mystery knit along that I've done. And I actually really enjoyed that one. Um, it just happens to be the only one that I've ever done. My fear, which is I think lots of people's fears, is that they're gonna knit something that they hate and then you spent all that time and beautiful yarn and you have this finished object that you're not thrilled with. Um, so that's, of course, my fear. I'm sure a lot of people share that when they're thinking about doing mystery knit alongs. But uh, after seeing clue one, I kind of have a good feeling. So it's a three color shawl. And clue one is has brioche, which I've never done before. It's two color brioche in a geometric triangle pattern. And it's beautiful. I love geometric patterns. And um, <laughs> just throwing that out there. And I've never tried brioche and I thought, I'm thinking maybe I should, maybe this is a good time to go for it. I mean, I am not a I don't want to say I'm not a scared knitter. That doesn't make sense. That's not what I'm trying to say. I will try it. I'll try anything in knitting. It's it's knitting. You can try it and take it apart if it doesn't work or if you hate it or if it doesn't look good. You can take it apart. So 
I'm always down to try uh, new things with my knitting and I'd love to learn brioche anyway so if that's something that interests you and you don't mind spoilers I don't I I'm honestly I don't mind looking at the spoilers but uh, check that out there's a um, there's a hashtag on Instagram I think it's just hashtag so 2017 I think um, and then you can also uh, sneak a peek at people's project pages on Ravelry if they put their first clue progress up. So along those lines, I also keep seeing photos of um, Knit Graffiti's Rebel Shawl. And Knit Graffiti, her name is Leslie Ann Robinson. She does those sizzle pop patterns that are incredible. That's dream knitting. I would love to make one of those someday. Being that I'm a big Star Wars fan and this is a shawl that she designed to sort of honor Carrie Fisher after she uh, passed this past December. Um, I don't know, it's, it's, it's hitting all of the right uh, nerd boxes for me, basically. Also, I really wanna learn brioche. I really wanna try it. So the cool thing about the Rebel pattern is that there's Rebel 1 and Rebel 2 and Rebel 1 is one color brioche, and Rebel 2 is, of course, two color brioche, but they're the same. It's the same pattern. It's a crescent-shaped shawl. It's got these lines that come down and then end in this beautiful lace. And I think that it's probably too advanced in the brioche department for me. Maybe not. Maybe I should just go for it. The thing is, if I do it, I would have to use two different colors. Well, I wouldn't have to, but in my stash, I would need to choose two different colors. I don't have two of the same color fingering weight yarn in my stash. So I could either buy two skeins, which I don't really want to do. I want to use up some of my stash, or <laughs> I guess I could try dyeing two matching skeins, but I don't think I'm ready for that. <laughs> I don't think I want to go there. So. Maybe I will just jump in and see what happens with the two color. But again, that Sosu MCAL is calling my name as well. I don't know. There are so many tempting, so many tempting knits out right now. So many beautiful designs. So I just wanted to throw some of them out there. Maybe there are things you haven't heard of before that you uh, would be interested to check out. And even if it's not something you would knit, if you're a fan of just colors and color combinations, especially the Sosu Cal, um, look up that hashtag because People are, are combining colors that I wouldn't expect that are just lovely. And last but not least, let's talk about pod people. So I uh, always try to uh, point you in the right direction for an awesome podcast every episode. And this time I would like to point you in the direction of Joy from the Anxious Knitter podcast. Uh, Joy's podcast is awesome. She always has lovely projects. She chooses great colors for her knitting projects. And so Joy's podcast is all about that she is the anxious knitter and she always has a dweeb story. And I can highly identify because I myself am a dweeb. Actually, I like to think that I'm a dork, which is super related to being a dweeb. So maybe I'm not a dweeb, maybe I'm more of a dork. Um, but uh, anyhow, I can totally relate <laughs> to her dweeb stories and um, yeah, check out Joy's podcast. It is a lot of fun and Joy wears really cool lipstick and as you know, um, I like fun podcasts with cool lipstick. It's just sort of my thing. <laughs> so, <laughs> uh, so check out The Anxious Knitter. And that's it for this episode. I feel like we talked about a lot today. Um, so look out for the promo video for the uh, Drop Spindle Spin Along that's coming up. And until then, that's the next time I'll see you. So until then, happy knitting. <laughs>